Hello, everyone, and welcome to DBVI's 100-year celebration. Today, we continue with our theme to celebrate our past and empower our future with an exciting presentation highlighting the Virginia Rehabilitation Center for the Blind and Vision Impaired. Before we get started, one piece of information I'd like to share. To enable closed captioning, please click on the closed captioning box on the bottom of your screen, then click on show subtitles to enable the captioning. I'd also like to tell you about our next centennial celebration Please plan to join us on September 29th at two o'clock. And this presentation will feature the Vocational Rehabilitation Program and the Rehabilitation Technology Program. Also, be sure to visit our website in between all these centennial presentations for more information about our history and to learn about other events. Our website is www.v dbvi.org slash centennial. All right, now for today's main event. Let's sit back, get comfortable, and ready to celebrate with our colleagues from the Virginia Rehabilitation Center for the Blind and Vision Impaired. Take it away, Kim between what you once were and who you are now becoming is where the dance of life really takes place. Barbara DeAngelis. Welcome to the Virginia Rehabilitation Center for the Blind and Vision Impaired VRCBVI highlight for the Virginia Department for the Blind and Vision Impaired Centennial Celebration. Over the next 40 minutes, you will hear an overview of the dynamic programs available at VRCBVI, staff will describe the classes they teach to prepare students for the dance of life, and former students will share stories of how participating in a residential skills of blindness training program transformed their lives and gave them the confidence to pursue their personal and career goals. Join us now as we explore what independence for a blind person can look like. Since VRCBVI's inception in 1970, what changes have occurred in the skills blind people need to live without limits and thrive at school, on the job, and in their communities? You will hear about how VRCBVI is shattering stereotypes and building belief in the abilities of blind people. Learn how you can help blind Virginians engage actively in the world around them, go confidently in the direction of their dreams, and live the lives they have imagined. Now, let us step back in time to where it all began. In 1966, the General Assembly of Virginia appropriated $20,000 in capital outlay funds to the Virginia Commission for the Visually Handicapped for the purpose of planning a rehabilitation center for the blind. This action was the culmination of studies which had been conducted over several years to determine the most effective way in which visually impaired and blind individuals could be provided with diagnostic evaluation, personal adjustment training, counseling, and vocational guidance. For many years, it had been necessary for students who received these services through the Commission's Vocational Rehabilitation Program to be enrolled in rehabilitation centers outside of Virginia. During the 1970 session, our General Assembly approved construction of a rehabilitation center for the visually impaired in Virginia. 45% of the funds were to come from the state of Virginia and 55% from the federal government. On July 8, 1970, a groundbreaking ceremony for the new facility was held at 401 Azalea Avenue and construction began on July 13, 1970. In preparation for the opening of the Rehabilitation Center, an interim adjustment training program was initiated using temporary quarters. Staff hiring for this program began in October 1969. On July 1, 1970, the Richmond Adjustment Training Program 
began in the basement of Calvary Baptist Church at 3325 West Cary Street in Richmond with a director, a secretary, three rehabilitation instructors, and five students. Students were housed in rented facilities in the community. On February 22, 1972, the Richmond Adjustment Training Program moved into the completed facilities on Azalea Avenue and became the Virginia Rehabilitation Center for the Blind and Vision Impaired, VRCBVI. The new facilities, which were situated on a 32-acre tract of land, included a dormitory, which could accommodate 40 residents, a cafeteria, which could serve approximately 65 persons, and an activities and administration building. In March of 1975, a recreation building funded by Lions of Virginia and matching federal funds was added to the Rehabilitation Center complex. This building includes an exercise room, a gym, a stage, a game room, a bowling alley, and a swimming pool. A VRCBVI volunteer council was established in 1988 and assists the center by providing funds, equipment, other services which could not otherwise be provided to the center and its students. In 2008, the VRCBVI dormitory was updated to facilitate greater privacy and more opportunities for independence. The dormitory can now house up to 34 students with six independent living apartments and 28 private dorm rooms. In 2012, the Activities and Administration Building was renovated to support accessibility features and state-of-the-art technological advances and to prepare students to thrive in real-world environments. The Virginia Rehabilitation Center for the Blind and Vision Impaired has been recognized as a national leader in providing rehabilitation services to the blind and vision impaired and continues to strive to develop even more unique programs. We eagerly face the challenges of tomorrow and look forward to opportunities for our dedicated staff to provide quality services to individuals who are blind, deafblind, or vision impaired throughout the Commonwealth, meeting them where they are and empowering them to achieve their employment, independent living, and educational goals. This is the original building where the Virginia Rehabilitation Center for the Blind and Vision Impaired was housed. I am here interviewing Dan Miller, who was part of the original staff hired for the Virginia Rehabilitation Center for the Blind and Vision Impaired in 1969. We also have Bob Burton, and Bob Burton was hired at VRCBVI back in 1977, so he was hired when the center was relocated over to Azalea, and he later became the deputy commissioner for DBVI. Dan, I wanted to start with you and ask you about what it was like when you came to work for VRCBVI. When we were interviewed for the job because they were going to build a center, of course we didn't have a center, so we used this building here. They contracted with them and used the basement of the church for classes and things like that. So we had, basically we had rail and that kind of thing and down here. And we had, uh, and the mobility people met down here, but then we were out, you know, we'd go out you know, for mobility and that kind of stuff. We did some things here too, but using the steps of the facility here. You were saying that the building next door was where the activities of daily living was housed. Right, and yeah. uh, so they did cooking over there and all that. And at the end of the day, they had to go somewhere. So the agency had contracted out with the massive hotel down at 4th, and me. And, and so then they were brought in every morning and then taken back? Yeah, I'm thinking they go back. And, but we had a lot of local people too that would come in, so. How many students did you all work with at a time? We, we had maybe 10 or 12. Or and Bob, so I know you came in 1977. Um, you know, what was it like when you came? How was it different, obviously, from? Well, the big difference was that there were six orientation and mobility specialists. That was a pretty sizable staff at that point in time. I mean, there was a swimming pool, there was a bowling alley, um, there's a basketball court, um, there were these very nice dormitories. It was really a state-of-the-art facility at the time. 
you started as an orientation and mobility instructor. Right. Can you tell me a little bit about that, like how that worked and maybe what the differences are between then and, and now? Really, I, I would say there's not a whole lot of difference. Uh, we always started on campus, make sure everybody was oriented to the space there. Uh, we had what we call our basic neighborhood area, and then we would go into uh, downtown and do uh, travel in, in an urban area. We'd do transportation. We would go to uh, Willow Lawn Shopping Center. Hi, my name is Dennis Garza. I'm former director of the Virginia Rehabilitation Center for the Blind and Vision Impaired. I want to wish uh, DBVI a happy 100th anniversary and keep up the good work. It was in 1972 and I was still in graduate school and I was looking for an internship and I ended up doing my internship here at the rehab center. And after the internship, I was hired as a counselor and ended up working here 34 years. But when I started my internship, the center had just been built and actually they did not have students here at the time. So I started my internship without actual students in the program. And in those days, uh, they were just building the staff. They had started in the church with a small program there and moved to this facility. And we thought we were in heaven because we had this brand new facility. We were getting ready to accept students from all over the state. So it was kind of a a time of growth and preparing to provide quality services to students and families throughout Virginia. In the early 70s, there was growth in rehabilitation in general. We were developing programs like the Deaf Blind Program, for example, was started uh, in those days. We started working with Deaf Blind clients here at the center and used interpreters and worked with the uh, community to provide services to deafblind students. And eventually that grew into hiring a deafblind coordinator who was housed here at the center and eventually became a, a statewide program. Same kind of thing with low vision services. Uh, we started low vision clinics here with a local ophthalmologist who uh, came in on a I think it was like a monthly basis, and our orientation and mobility staff worked with developing low vision services in those days. And again, that gradually and eventually became a statewide program. Uh, the other thing is, of course, technology services. I can't remember the dates, but I would imagine it was in the 80s. We got our first computer system through a grant program. We got a grant with IBM to do actual vocational training here at the center. So that program kind of mushroomed and again, once again, became a statewide program. So I, I see the center as kind of, in those days, as an incubator for services. I'm Michael Lee. I guess my story is two part. I was shot in the face when I was 12. So at that point I lost the vision out of one eye. Went to college, went to uh, the illustrious Hampton University. Um, I graduated with, from Hampton University with a deg degree in psychology. And um, I started teaching. This is when my life, actually, the, my path took me to the center. Basically, I woke up one morning, I was uh, totally in the dark or totally blind. And uh, we found out I have a condition called optic neuritis. For a year, I was at home. I was unable to function or do anything for myself. Uh, I had a counselor come to the, come to the house from the state, and uh, they told us about the program. At the time, I was reluctant to do so because... We thought my vision was gonna come back to full restoration, but after a while we realized it wasn't, it was, and I had to get off my mother's couch. Early uh, 2000, I went to the center and uh, it changed my life, but at the time I thought life was kind of over. So I realized life had just begun. I couldn't necessarily travel on my own. So when I first, I lost my vision, I would depend on my friends a lot. Going through the program allowed me to understand what true independence was, right? Because we had an independent living class as well. So then I learned how to take care of myself. I had to learn, I was capable of living on my own. And since then, um, I lived in many cities by myself. Uh, I travel everywhere I go alone. Uh, without the center, I wouldn't be who I am, right? Clearly, a lot of things have changed over the past 50 years. With advancements in technology and employment opportunities, individuals who are blind, deafblind, or vision impaired have so many more tools at their disposal that will empower them to live the lives they have imagined. Nevertheless, the fundamental skills of blindness remain absolutely essential. 
We will now explore the current Virginia Rehabilitation Center for the Blind and Vision Impaired Adjustment to Blindness Training Program. My name is Melody Roan and I'm the director of the center. VRCBVI offers training in the skills of blindness to blind and vision impaired Virginians and encourages people to develop positive attitudes about blindness. As you enter the front lobby at VRCBVI, there is a quote on the wall that reads, Go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Live the life you've imagined. From the first contact with VRCBVI, we want students to focus on the possibilities for their lives rather than the perceived limitations. Our staff do an excellent job of challenging people to gain competency in the skills of blindness. We also work with them on looking at what the misconceptions of blindness are that are held by the general public and by the blind themselves. Each training program is individualized. You've heard me talking about the skills of blindness. So what do those skills include? Well, there's orientation and mobility, Hi there, my name is Becky Keller. I'm the lead orientation and mobility instructor here at VRCBVI. The main purpose of our cane travel course is to help folks gain the skills to be able to get up and go wherever they want to go, whenever they want to go, however they want to go, without inconveniencing themselves or anyone else around them. And we start with square one with folks. We start with working on how to hold the cane, how to walk with the cane, how to locate drop-offs with the cane. Recognizing open spaces and closed spaces in an unfamiliar building. Going up and down stairs with your cane. Being able to solicit information within an unfamiliar environment. And then moving on outdoors. Getting to read our environment using the sun for information or the traffic nearby for information. And then learning how to read intersections. And then we also work on, with our students, grocery shopping, using customer service, locating businesses, learning about address systems, and even using public transportation. So it, it basically boils down to we want to put all the tools in our students' hands so that they can realize not only that they have the techniques to be able to travel independently, but the confidence to travel independently. And that's probably the biggest thing. It's, it's understanding that that cane brings freedom to them. I'm Asia Hurtado a recent graduate from the adult and the vending program there at the DBVI Rehabilitation Center. That is one of the trainers we received to go back to work, and that's what I did today is just got off from work. Orientation mobility is one of the biggest things that I've learned to be able to go back to work. So we are here now, as my camera move around at my new location. I've moved from Richmond to Arlington for my new job, and now I'm going to walk back to the apartment from our clubhouse. So come on and let's have a little bit of fun. All right, we just made it to the elevator. See you on the other side. I'm about to walk right to my apartment. So we're gonna walk forward. And if you see my cane, I'm going left to right. This is what's something I learned in Owen Hill. We're gonna to try to find it. I know up here somewhere I have to make a right turn. So now I'm beginning to shoreline, which means they're teaching at Owen Hill. So I'm barely tapping my cane, and I know there's doors here, so I have to very tap lightly. I think I got a turn coming up here. And when you take it, that's a hallway there. So I'm sweeping the sea, I make this right turn. My door is on the first. So I'm still shorelining, and that's my door. Thank you guys, welcome to the center. Great instructors. I hope you enjoy your journey just as much as I do. Braille. Hi, my name is Dominique Lawless, Braille instructor at the Virginia Rehabilitation Center for the Blind and Vision Impaired. Here at VRCBVI, our students have the opportunity to use the Braille code, which was created over 200 years ago and is still widely being used today. Although there is a large unemployment rate amongst the blind and vision impaired, studies have shown that people who read Braille are more likely to gain and retain employment. Our students learn to read the Unified English Braille Code, learn to use devices like Braille displays, and continue to use low-tech ways of producing Braille, such as the Slate and Stylus. It's our goal at VRCBVI to help folks find a way for Braille to fit into their lives, whether it be environmental Braille, such as reading signs on the elevator or spices in one's kitchen, or by reading a person's favorite book. Braille is critically important to me because I know that I will need it in all the meetings and the 
the sessions that I will be going forward in and back into into my office. I'm an attorney, and I need much of this to just be able to produce the work that is necessary to move forward. I knew nothing about Braille coming in, and now I am able to literally sit down and write, and I can read. Cooking, personal and home management. In personal and home management, blind, deafblind, and low vision students gain skills associated with their activities of daily living, empowering students to fully participate in society through employment and community engagement. Personal and home management covers a wide array of skills training, including cooking skills, oven and stove safety, food preparation, cleaning skills, labeling and identification techniques, organizational skills, personal grooming and hygiene, money identification, laundry skills, ironing skills, and leisure activities. Keyboarding and technology skills, Hello, comma. Welcome to the VRCBVI Technology Department, period. Today, comma, we will be talking about keyboarding and computers, period. Welcome. My name is Michael Villafane, and I'm here at VRCBVI's Technology Department. Under the Department of Technology, we have keyboarding and computers classes, where we teach touch typing and computer skills. As most people know, if you have good touch typing skills, that leads to good computer skills. And if you have good computer skills, that leads to independence and more access to jobs. So students are encouraged to learn how to use Microsoft Office, how to browse the internet, and how to fill out job applications. These are some of the many topics that are covered under the umbrella of technology, keyboarding, and computers here at VRCBVI. I'm Mike Fish, lead technology instructor here at VRCBVI. In the technology class, we teach folks how to use things like tablets. Amazon devices like the Echo, Android and iPhones, Braille devices, literally anything with a battery or a plug that talks to you or that you want to talk to, we have it here. If you don't have it, then we'll show you about it. If you have it, then you'll learn to use it. Learning your tech brings you one step closer to your employment goals. Job readiness skills. Hi, I'm Greg Chittum. At VRCBVI, it's our goal to empower our students to be able to determine a career path, land a job, and then succeed once they've gotten the job. So in our job readiness class, we work on the skills necessary to do that. Training in resume creation, interview skills, job search strategies, and soft skills are all included in a student's program here at the center. Research has shown that the more a person is involved in his job search, the greater the likelihood of his being employed in the future. So we really try hard that, uh, to make sure that our students are prepared to take ownership of the job search process once they leave the center. You know, like our program overall, independence is definitely the name of the game. Finally, RCBVI is developing a work experience program for the adults that participate in our Adjustment to Blindness program. Working with the Virginia Career Work Centers to take advantage of their training opportunities and provide our students some real world work experience so that once they get home, but to hit the ground running with their job search. My name is Roxanne Randall. I lost my vision completely approximately two years ago. I came to the center because I was at that standpoint where I always been independent and I still wanted to keep my independence. I went to the center to learn mobility. I need to learn a different software. So I learned JAWS and I learned how to do my iPhone. I learned who I am as an individual. I work with a whole lot of bunch of wonderful individuals that made me get to this point of my independence, made me get to this point of knowledge of my computer skills, my mobility skills, job seeking skills, preparing me for interview skills, learning new technology, learning ways to interview. The center has really renewed the person that I am. It got me out of that funk and that depression and that anger of what's next and whatever else is going to happen. Now I'm looking forward to how to embrace every day and be a part of the day and enjoy every day as I move forward each and every day. Adult Basic Education. Hi, I'm Joanne Wiggins, and I teach Adult Basic Education, 
or ABE. At the center, ABE class is intended to help students improve their academic skills as part of pursuing their overall training goals. You might want to brush up on your writing or your math skills or some other academic area. And there's lots of reasons why people take ABE. Sometimes it's part of becoming more independent. Sometimes it's because a person wants to finish uh, their GED, or maybe they want to go on to further education, or it's part of the overall plan for obtaining employment. And really, the instructional goals are individualized. It really depends on what the, what the particular student wants to study. So in terms of how we study, it really depends on the individual student's technical and blindness skills. So we've used audio recordings or screen reader software or large print or some combination of those. VRCBVI, ABE, is a team effort. We work together to help you obtain your goals. Health education. Hi, I'm Kim Ladd, the diabetes and health educator here at VRCBVI. I work with students to help them understand their chronic disease processes and empower them to manage the processes independently so that they can live a healthy life and reach their training and employment goals. Students must be independent with their personal care, medical care, and medication management in order to participate in VRCBVI training. If they are not, then I work with each student prior to their enrollment to educate them on any aspect of their chronic disease management that is necessary for them to become independent. Things such as checking blood sugar levels, identifying medications, or administering medications. The teaching is individualized and may include hand over hand instruction, utilizing low vision aids, using adaptive equipment such as talking glucometers, continuous glucose meter apps, the script talk medication reader or labeling systems. I also inform them of available resources and work with them on organizational and problem solving skills to ensure that each student is independent and caring for their health. For current VRCBVI students, I help to empower them by collaborating with them on how to problem solve acute or chronic medical issues, understand their healthcare benefits, teaching them how to advocate for their healthcare needs, and I am also available as a resource on any medical related issue. There is no reason to let blindness be an excuse to not take care of your health. Conversations about blindness. The Conversations About Blindness, or CAB class, gives staff and students the opportunity to learn from one another's experiences, challenges, and accomplishments concerning blindness. Some of the topics we tackle include, what does it mean to accept one's blindness? How do we educate the general public about blindness? How do we help our families be okay with our blindness, etc.? This class meets once a week, and provides a framework on which blind individuals can build belief in themselves and learn about what is possible if you are blind. The class is led by experienced staff. Students also have the opportunity to engage in individual and group presentations. The reason why I, I, feel, I feel more confident is because I spent the last what, year and a half at home in a room because my family didn't understand the severity of my vision loss. And so I would spend a lot of time in my room just crying because nobody understood how fearful I was to go down the stairs or, or to try to um, get up in the middle of the night and it just bang into everything. And, um, and now I have knowledge that I can share with my family so that their ignorance won't be so ignorant and that they'll be more understanding, hopefully, of my situation as I educate them on how I can be more independent. We invite anyone who is interested in seeing what our program is all about to take a tour of VRCBVI. We have a team of dedicated staff and enthusiastic students who would love to show you the numerous possibilities for people who are blind or vision impaired. It is the goal of the VRCBVI training program to raise expectations, promote independence, and prepare our students to participate actively and successfully in the real world, which most definitely includes going to work. 
If you decide to participate in the VRCBVI training program, come prepared to have fun, work hard, and use the skills of blindness you are learning both during and outside of class. Remember, when you leave the center program, go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Live the life you've imagined. My name is Cynthia Brandon, and I came to the center in 2015. I would like to say congratulations to the center on their centennial. When I came to the center, I did not want to be there. Uh, my family wanted me to come. My reason for not wanting to come was that that meant that my sight was not coming back. Now, deep inside, I already knew that, but I just was having a hard time accepting it. When I came to the center in the very beginning, it was hard. It's a lot of hard work, but I finally learned that I could be independent again, just in a different way. So learning all the activities such as O&M and computers and, and um, cooking and Braille taught me so much. But it took a while for me to accept these things because I could not succeed until I accepted my blindness. I never thought that I would be able to go back to work. I was a nurse for 40 years, so I knew I couldn't go back to clinical work anyway. I now am independent. I live alone. I work from home, and I'm also on a um, committee with uh, Hanover Dash Transportation. So, I, you know, I'm involved. Success takes time. And always remember that because that, that's a hard lesson. It doesn't just come you know, maybe right after you leave the center or, or doing the center. But don't give up. Whatever you do, don't give up. My name is Jerry Anderson. I have an eye disease called retinitis pigmentosa. When I turned 50 years old, I could no longer do the career of uh, building homes. So I was really scared and didn't know what my life was going to look like. This was when I found out about Virginia Rehab Center for the Blind and Vision Impaired and decided to go there. Had no idea what it was going to be like. I was really scared about what life was going to hold for me. But after going to the center, I got a lot more confidence in myself. After leaving the center, I away from there with the confidence of being able to do anything I want to do. I have worked on a fence project in my backyard. It took me six weeks to do, but I'm going to show you some of my fence that I did. Okay, here's my fence section. The side piece here, the bottom piece here, all of that was cut out of one by four on a table saw. I, I cut all the material I needed to use for each gate panel. I built all the gate panels myself. And when I was putting my post in the holes, when I stood the post up to get them level or plumb, I used an electronic level that beeps when it's plumb. I drilled all the holes in the tops of the post for the lights. I'll give you an idea of how much fence by scanning around the yard. It was 400 feet of fence that I did. Each summer, BRC BVI hosts the LIV program. Live Active, Live Healthy, Live Modern is a week-long intensive training retreat for seniors ages 55 and older who are experiencing vision loss. The LIFT program covers a wide array of topics and skills, including coping strategies, daily living skills, independent travel, access technology skills, diabetic information, nutritional consultations, recreation, and wellness activities. The LIVE program is for those blind and vision impaired seniors who want to maintain their independence and live active, live healthy, and live modern. Hello, my name is Tom Dillon. I'm uh, Susan Dillon's husband. When we arrived at the DBVI Center for a summer retreat for training, we were both scared and uncertain about what the future held for us. After a week's training there, we knew that we had a bright future and that we knew that life would go on. 
You are never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream. C.S. Lewis. Summer programs for youth. The LIFE program, which stands for Learning Independence, Feeling Empowered, is a five-week residential training program for students who are blind or vision impaired between the ages of 14 and 18. It is designed to challenge students to go outside their comfort zones and learn skills that will prepare themselves to engage confidently in real-world activities. It incorporates three innovative components. One, daily classes in the skills of blindness such as braille, can travel, cooking and cleaning, accessing technology, and job readiness. Two, students also participate in confidence building activities. These activities are in place to provide opportunities to use the skills of blindness in challenging circumstances. Some of the confidence building activities in the LIFE program include mock interviews, improvisation training, running, cycling, completing a high ropes course, rock climbing, whitewater rafting, grilling, a driver's education experience, a formal dinner and dance, and etiquette and networking training. Three, research has shown that young people who are blind that are highly engaged in obtaining and completing work experiences are significantly more likely to be successfully employed in the future. So the final component is a volunteer work experience in recent summers Students have worked at businesses such as Lewis Ginter Botanical Gardens, Coleman Brothers Florist, Mostly Architects, the Valentine Museum, Chick fil A, the Richmond Flying Squirrels, Tom Leonard's Farmers Market, the Delta Hotel by Marriott, the Richmond Kickers, Sugar Shack Donuts, Berkwood Swim and Racket Club, Owood Thompson's Local Market, For the Love of Chocolate, All Greens, YMCA, and as an intern at Delicate Crispies. VRCBVI is grateful for the outstanding support it receives from Richmond and the surrounding communities. And this program would not be the success it is without their involvement. The LIFE program culminates with a graduation ceremony. In 2017, Governor of Virginia addressed attendees, encouraging LIFE participants to learn the skills necessary take an active role in Virginia's economy. The effectiveness of the program can be summed up in the words of a past participant. I feel empowered by the independence that was expected of me. I never learned to do any of this stuff to live on my own before the LIFE program. New experiences improve my skills and my confidence. I love it. Hey, DBVI, this is Shep with Beyond Boundaries, and I'm here at Shields Lake in Richmond. Um, about to go fishing, but I just want to take a second and say happy 100 years. We have worked with the Virginia Rehabilitation Center for Blind and Vision Impaired for the past, I believe, five years now. Rafting, rock climbing, just doing a lot of stuff outdoors. We love y'all. Um, it's awesome that y'all are 100 years strong right now, and we're just excited to see you every year. Get some adventures under our belts, have some fun, some good laughs, and I just wanted to say happy 100. I'm Will Brunner, Aquatics Director at Berkwood Swim and Racquet Club, and I just wanted to say thanks, happy anniversary to Greg and all the participants at the VRC BVI for working with us for the past five years. As much as they have learned from us, we have equally learned just as much from them. Happy anniversary, thanks for all you do. The first year we worked with the students, it was just as much a new experience for us as it was for them. They improve every single day and never back down from a job that seems challenging. Working with the VRC BVI is the highlight of every Berkwood summer. With just one training shift, they flourish. We can't wait to see what we experience next. It's the all day on your first day. Happy anniversary, VRC BVI! Delta Hotel by Marriott, downtown Richmond, and we're excited to celebrate with DBVI the 100th anniversary. Over the last six years, we've had the opportunity and fortunate enough to host the life program here at the hotel and we're excited for this year just a few weeks away all right guys what do you think happy, happy anniversary. anniversary for many years vrcbvi has offered a college prep program for students with vision loss in the summer of 2020 vrcbvi began a new partnership with the school of professional and continuing studies at the university of richmond to offer the steps to success program Steps to Success, which stands for Strategies and Techniques for Enhancing Performance and Skills, 
gives participants the opportunity to assess their college readiness skills, enhance awareness of the academic and blindness related demands of college, and evaluate their ability to manage time and priorities. Part former participants in VRCP VI's college prep programs have gone on to enroll in and graduate from many respected colleges and universities. And the Steps to Success program continues to help our students make their future academic endeavors successful. Hi, I'm Governor Ralph Northern, and I'm pleased to join the Department for the Blind and Vision Impaired to help kick off your centennial year. The Virginia Rehabilitation Center for the Blind and Vision Impaired quickly adapted to the challenges presented by the COVID-19 pandemic, offering virtual training programs on a host of topics that drew not only Virginia residents, but individuals from other states and countries. This innovative approach has helped blind, low vision, and deaf blind individuals and their families stay engaged and learning throughout the past year. Hello, I'm Joe Ashley, a former client of the Department of the Blind and Vision Impaired and a former assistant commissioner with the Virginia Department for Aging and Rehabilitative Services. I had the opportunity to participate in a number of the virtual classes provided by the Virginia Deaf Center for the Blind and Vision Impaired. And I want to say that I found these very informative and useful to me personally. I learned more about how Braille might be useful to me. I learned about how I could better my iOS skills on my iPhone. Although I find myself to be a pretty decent user of the iPhone, I did learn even in the basics class, a number of things that were practical to me for everyday use. Of particular importance to me was some of the travel sessions that I did. I got a better understanding of how the long white cane might be useful to me, the importance of confidence, and how I should think differently about participating and learning my travel skills. I do want to. Uh, congratulate my colleagues at D uh, the Rehab Center for the Blind, and DBVI, for their efforts in putting these virtual trainings together. They were excellent, and I really did appreciate what they did. Empowering your future. Empowering dreams. Hello, my name is David. My dream is to accomplish everything I set my mind to and to be the world's greatest animator. My name is Allie. My dream is to become either a music therapist, a social worker, or a counselor. And I also want to continue performing in music concerts as a singer. My name is Ada, and my dream is to be a travel agent and travel the world. I'm Araceli, and my dream is to become a singer and travel the world. Hi, my name is Karina, and my dream is I want to be an airline customer service agent and be better at running. Hi, my name is Jada, and my dream is to become a successful singer-songwriter and a high school choir teacher. Hello, my name is Hannah. And my dream is to become an impressionist and make Willy's Wonderland a real place. My name is Jessa and my dream is to be a successful baker of my own business and to be a plus size model. Hi, I'm Puya and my dream is to become a nuclear engineer and live in the Netherlands. My name is Roger. My dream is to be a visionary and be an entrepreneur. Mi nombre es Roger y mi sueño es ser un misionario y ser un empresario.
Go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Live the life you've imagined. For more information about the services and programs available at VRCBVI, please visit our website at vrcbvi.org. I would like to express my profound gratitude to the following individuals who served on the planning team for this video. Kim Ladd, who put countless hours into producing the video, Greg Chittam, who assisted her in this process, Jimmy Morris, Dominique Lawless, Dave Fuller, and Sarah Call, who conducted numerous interviews and offered their invaluable input into the video content. Thank you all.